When we're working with remote switches on a conventional and even a command equipped layout, it's important to note that the Lionel O gauge, both the O31 and the O72 remote switches, the entire line of fast track remote switches, that these two uh, lines of switches uh, come pre-wired from the factory as remote control. They also have the ability to be run off a of constant voltage. The O27 switches that we've shipped over the last several years, uh, they don't have the ability to be wired for constant voltage out of the box. However, there's a very simple modification you can make, which we'll show you later, to an O27 switch to run this under constant voltage as well. When you're operating conventionally, the O gauge and the fast track and the O27 switch all get their power for the switch machine, which is really nothing more than a twin coil in these two and a small, mo uh, small DC motor in the fast track switch. They all get their power from the track power. So center rail and outside rail, or AC hot and AC ground, is where the power comes from. So if we're running our train at nine volts and the train's going slow and we throw our remote switch, we may or may not have enough power to power the switch machine itself. As a result, the train goes in a direction that we don't want it to. So in order to avoid instances like that, or when you're operating in a command control environment and you've got 18 volts of power on the track all the time, things such as the incandescent lamps inside the O-gauge switch machines will burn so bright and create so much heat that the lanterns will melt. What we can do to fix this is we can run all of our switches off of a constant voltage supply. So going back to that video we made on how to phase a transformer, if we have our transformers in phase, we're able to use that fixed 14 volt AC supply to power our switch machines. On an O-gauge switch, each and every O-gauge switch comes with a constant voltage plug. This plug is designed to plug into the side of the switch machine. You'll notice it has a tapered appearance to it. That's because when it goes in, it takes a contact off the center pin, pulls it away. That contact is connected to the center rail. So we're taking power off of the center rail and putting it into the screw terminal on the, on the opposite end of this constant voltage plug. This inserts right on that post, like that. And now, whatever we have connected here is the amount of voltage that's going to be applied to our switch machine, which again, in this instance, would be a 14 volt AC hot fixed supply off of an accessory transformer. This way, our lamps run at 14 volts. They don't get hot. They run at their designed operating temperature. The lantern doesn't melt, etc. And the switch machine fires reliably regardless of whether you have track power applied or track power off or very low track power on the track itself. Your switches will throw reliably each and every time. On the fast track switch machine, or switch I should say, on the underside there is a total of seven terminals. I don't know if you can see that clearly. But we have the four terminals over here which connect to our controller and those should be left alone for manual control using the remote uh, control device. But on this side we have auxiliary ground, auxiliary power, and what's called track jumper. Track jumper is effectively connected to the center rail and it, there's a small jumper piece installed in there that goes from track jumper to aux in or AUX in. All we need to do to make this run off of constant voltage on our separate power supply is to remove this track jumper. So just lightly undo these two screws and we pull this jumper out entirely. Once that jumper is removed, we then have to simply insert a wire into the center terminal screw it down using the screw terminal provided and connect that wire to our 14 volt AC fixed accessory power and then regardless of the track voltage our switch machine will operate reliably each and every time. It is important to note that there is a voltage regulator inside our switch so even if we are putting 18 volts in 
it's only using 5 volts DC through the regulator board inside but still 18 volts going in does generate heat when you're pulling out 5 volts so if we can lower that input voltage to 14 volts optimum performance out of a fast track switch machine and finally we have the O27 remote switches and these like I said these only currently get their power from the track. There is no separate constant voltage input for an O27 switch. But it's a very simple modification. It's done like this. You remove the screw on the top of the switch plate, or switch machine cover I should say. Take that screw out completely. The switch machine cover lifts up and the tab down here pulls out and the machine cover comes off. What that does is that exposes the twin coil that is used to actually throw the switch back and forth. The twin coil method has been around for centuries really. All it does is it uh, energizes one side of the coil, creates a magnetism, pulls the slug one way, when you throw it the other way, energizes the other coil, pulls the slug back, switch machine goes back and forth. Very commonly used in model railroads. But the twin coil basically has a total of four wires. Two wires for the coil on this side and two wires for the coil on this side. The, uh, the right side, or to, in your instance, the left side and the right side, the outermost connections are connected to both rails here, which are the insulated rails for the non-derail feature, and it's connected down here where the controller connects. The connection from the center rail to the coil both happen right here in the center. So the two wires, one on either coil, come together into one wire and go down and connect to the center rail. It is possible to snip that wire, solder another wire to the coils, and run that out to your fixed 14 volt AC hot constant supply so that you've got a good solid 14 volt power coming to your switch machine at all times. We're going to get the camera up a little bit closer in a, just a moment and uh, I'm going to show you where we cut exactly. Once you've got the cover removed, you need to get in here and identify the wires. Very basic, you just want to gently pull these wires out. They are wrapped in a uh, white insulation and let's identify these quickly. I have one wire entering this coil on this side and I have one wire entering the coil on this side way out on the far ends. I have one remaining wire which is right here. It goes to the center connection between both coils. In order to create a constant voltage plug or wire for this twin coil switch machine we're simply going to clip this center wire and remove the insulation. You'll notice that there's two wires together. This might be a little difficult to see. Let me see if I can get this apart for you. There's actually two wires there. This wire, still in the nylon coating, actually goes down and connects to the center rail on your switch. So you want to make sure that this wire here is not exposed. You want to make sure that it stays within that that uh, vinyl or that nylon coating around it. Perhaps a little piece of heat shrink tubing over the end and heat that up so it shrinks down. And then you can tuck that in right down here on the switch machine and get it out of its out of the way. Unfortunately, the only good way to do this is as we're explaining, because the underside of the O27 switch is all riveted together. We really don't want you to have to tear those rivets out. So these two wires, you simply twist these together. You're going to connect them to another wire, which we'll just use this piece of red wire that we had from previous demonstrations. Wire these two together. Solder that connection, cover it with heat shrink tubing all the way up to the coil itself so that that AC hot is not exposed where it could short out on anything. 
You'll be required to either nip a small hole in the side or drill a hole and fish the wire through it. Put the switch cover back on the machine. Using your phase transformers, connect this twin wire or two wires to the coil or this wire here to your 14 volt AC hot fixed voltage and your switch machine will continually run on a fixed 14 volt supply regardless of what your center rail power is doing. That is the best way, in our opinion, to operate any remote switch on a fixed power supply off of your phased accessory transformer.